Hi there, just in the speed shop, I uh, got the camera fixed uh, on the phone, so just wanted to do a more detailed video on one of the CT125s that I've just taken delivery of. Uh, so I'm in the UK, the bikes have come from Thailand. Uh, the bikes have been brought in by Seven Seas Motors up in Dewsbury, who are a, a vehicle importer. They do a lot of old classic Honda uh, motorcycles, also some cars, but uh, they're kind of prevalent in bringing in interesting old Japanese uh, motorcycles. I think they've obviously seen a gap in the market with Honda not bringing in the CT125. You know, it's still a bewildering decision that Honda have not brought it in, especially as they're bringing in the new 2022 uh, Euro 5 compliant Super Cub, uh, and they're also bringing in the Euro 5 uh, monkey bike. So the fact it's got the same engine and lots of shared components seems to be an incredible mistake that they're not bringing this in as well, especially as there's a lot of hype and interest in this bike and barely none for the Super Cub. Uh, even though fundamentally they're very similar bikes. So uh, those guys up in Dewsbury have brought some in uh, and this is one of their bikes that I bought from them. Uh, I know everyone wants to know how much, £4,500, uh, which is a lot for a 125 uh, motorcycle, uh, but that comes uh, with MSVA fully registered, ready to go on the road. So, uh, and I don't have any co uh, commercial interest with them other than they've sold me a bike, but uh, I, I certainly acknowledge and know the level of effort it takes to bring in a bike and register it as a UK machine. So the fact that they're doing them four and a half on the road to me is actually not bad value, which sounds crazy for a 125, but having imported bikes myself, I know how much uh, time and energy uh, it goes into importing a bike. So what we've got on the CT125, just show you around it, just show you some of the things I, uh, I'm interested in, in about the bike. Okay, so if we, if we look at it visually, I think they've done a good job copying the CT110 uh, or the CT90. All the styling cues are there from the eye lift to exhaust, twin shock, uh, the chunky plastic frame, ultra-swept handlebars, uh, aluminium or metal uh, mudguard, 17-inch spoke wheels, uh, big rack on the back. I think most of the visual cues are there from, from the original. As you can see, I've got one in bits there, so not totally dissimilar. Obviously, you've got a lot more chunk in the plastic here. This is quite a broad plastic area, uh, whereas it's quite slender there. I think weight-wise, pushing and pulling them around, uh, I would say there's a good 10 kilos difference in the weight, the CT110 being lighter. Uh, it's also a slightly bit more agile just for being a bit slimmer, so easier to get on and off. Not quite as much of a swing on the leg to get your leg up and over, because the seat height is probably, I'd say, half an inch, an inch taller on the CT125 than it is on the on the CT110. Uh, I'm interested as to why they did that. Uh, I thought maybe a, a, a slimmer seat, well, a slimmer seat could be an option for anybody who's finding this a bit tall. They could get that remodeled to bring it down a bit. I think there's plenty of gap there. If we'll just show you what's, how this works. So you've got a key there. And that, in a minute, sorry, I need three hands. Uh, that flips open this. So you've got the, I think it's like a gallon litre uh, a gallon tank capacity. So with about 125 miles to gallon, I suspect you'd get about, yeah, 125 miles to a tank thereabouts, uh, which is about the same as you I used to get on the CT110. Also, quite weirdly, there is the Allen key under here, which is fiddly as buggery to get that out. And then I'll show you in a second why you need that. So, okay, so you pulled over, you need something from your toolbox. First, you've got to flip open the seat, get the uh, Allen key out, and then you can finally undo the uh, the compartment here, which is, I've got to be honest, a bit of a faff. There's a few basic tools in there, not much. Uh, I've got to say, I do prefer the the old original CT110 toolbox, where it's just on a, on a rubber strip. Maybe they've done it for safety or security, uh, on the CT110, but having to get a tool out to open the toolbox seems a little bit of a faff, but hey, it's just a niggle. Um, starting at the back, got a decent sized rear rack. It's actually broader and bigger, longer than the one on the uh, 110, which I think is really good. I think they've uh, thought about the practicality of this bike, and uh, to me, that's why this bike stands out above the monkey, above the super good, because it's a practically usable bike. So I went around the world on a CT110, and a bar, bar the slight uh, downside of a low speed, the rest of the bike is a perfect round-the-world machine. Uh, practical, serviceable, comfortable, 
easy to ride. You know, it ticks so many boxes. And one of that is the practicality of having a big rear rack. So the fact that Honda have mimicked it with an even bigger rear rack, I think is fantastic. Rated to take 20 kilos, although you are seeing some of these bikes with pillion pegs. So I'm assuming it must be strong enough to ultimately take another body. Um, which will be interesting to see how, how comfortable that will be. I've already seen that you can get in the accessory catalogue in Thailand, you just get some foot pegs that drop over there uh, and you're away to go buy a pillion uh, cushion and you're sorted. This is all plastic now, the rear arch, which all under there is... Is that metal there? Yeah, I think it's mainly all met, all plastic, which is, which is probably a good thing because one of the issues on the CTs and especially on the, on the, on the Cub, the C90s that we had, is a lot of rust underneath here. So the uh, swing arm mounts and all that would go and just under here would get a lot of tin, tin rot. Uh, and uh, you do have to, well, not, not personally, but I know people who've had to weld up the, up the, um, up the uh, what do you call it, wheel arch and things. So probably making it out of plastic, no bad thing. You've got flexible indicators which I think are a quite, quite nice touch. Semi-decent chain guard. Uh, keep a bit of splatter off of that. Uh, rims are 17 inch. It'd be interesting to see how badly or how well these rims survive getting the tire levers on them to change the tires. The good thing with the Alley um, rims of the CT110 is that you could be as rough as you want to with the tire levers and it obviously didn't chip or... Uh, damage your rim so it'd be interesting to see how that lasts i'm expecting to have it a typically crap honda chain on it which most of the small bikes have on the hondas uh, i remember taking a, a monkey bike when they first came out oh no it was a grom an msx 125 took it up the motorway had about 600 had it for 600 miles and the chain just every time i went on it i had to tighten the chain and eventually it stretched out and you need to put a better one on so hopefully slightly better than how i remember them quite an easily to adjust uh, and, and mark a uh, chain guide there uh, and it's just a, a two lock nuts there so a bigger nut i think it's a 12 and a 10 to to undo that obviously those tools don't come in the toolkit so that's something to to consider if you do get one uh what they've also carried over from the original ct110 which again makes it really practical is this high level air box breather so the the breather is somewhere in there i think uh, and then that feeds the airbox, feeds the engine, blah, 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 along there. What I've noticed earlier today, they've thought to put an easy accessible uh, drainage. I'm assuming that's to, that's to see that it's full and that's to empty it. So if you do get water in your airbox, it's as easy as, as emptying it like that, which I, th I think is a really nice touch, to be honest. The rest of the bike is, is slightly more sealed than, than the CT110. Three bolts on that uh, plastic guard over the frame on the 110, you get access to the carb and everything else. On this, there's a little bit more uh, bolts and packaging and these odd, uh, where you press these sort of pin mounts, which are really faff to operate. And I can't understand why they've used them. There must be a reason, uh, but they're a bit of faff to use. So obviously they're not as keen for you to dismount the plastics as they were uh, on the CT110. And maybe you don't need to, you know, not having a carb means you haven't got anything to faff around with there. And I guess hopefully the bike remains reliable and therefore doesn't need stripping back to, to its uh, component parts. Um, what we've got is uh, removable rubber inserts on the foot pegs. I think they're really, oh sorry, I think they're a really nice rubber uh, foot peg on this. Nice, broad, pretty long, decent. I think these have come off something else. I, I think I'm sure I've recognised them from, a, from another bike, but nice and grippy. Whether you're gonna be standing up riding this bike, I'm not sure. I think it'll be too hunched over and I've never got the best off-road performance from standing up on a, on us on the ct 110s uh then the rest of the engine obviously same as a super cub i believe same state of tune and everything else so uh some electronic gubbins gubbins there the fuel injection and all the rest of it so pretty neat design also well shielded by this uh bash plate which feels you know it, it's okay i don't think that's particularly as bad as some other some guards i've seen on bigger more expensive bikes so i, I think that's pretty decent and then the down tubes here which are I'm not sure if they're structural or just decorative. I know you could run the CT110s without these on, so I'm assuming they're more just uh, decorative and also to mount the, the plate to. Uh, we've got a nice mud flap. I quite like that they put a mud flap. Basic things like that make it practical. Stuck front of the engine getting covered in crud. Another nice little touch. But otherwise, all nice and uh, sturdy. Gearbox, I've kind of managed to get it figured out with the help of some people on Facebook who pointing me in the, the, the right direction. So it's uh, neutral, so you're neutral now. Down into first, down into second, down into third, down into fourth. And then when stationary, you go down again and that goes back into neutral. 
and so it's a, a, a rotary box so basically cyclical because it comes back on itself uh it is odd because it's it's reverse so it's it's down to go up down to first down to second down to third down to fourth etc up to go down so up to go from fourth to third from third to second from second to first it's all up uh and i believe i've been reading the idea is that so you can do an up change and a down change using the sole of your foot rather than the toe so in markets where people were riding flip-flops this could be an old wife story they can still change the gears even in flip-flops uh, which i think is fascinating although you used to be able to do it in flip-flops in the conventional sense that the ct 110 worked where it was up to go what to an up one up two up three up four down 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 you just use the heel to go up and the toe to go down so not sure. I think I prefer the way it is on the CT110. This takes a little bit getting used to. It really does. Uh, and the idea of putting people from one from the CT110 to the CT125 might be a little bit too much because it's all inverted. Um, so there must be a reason. They must have thought this is the best way. For me personally, I would have preferred it a conventional up to go up, down to go down. But hey, you know, I'm not in charge of Honda, so I don't know. Um, Nice digital dash, pretty functional. ABS non-switchable. So you've got fuel gauge and everything there. Kill switch, blah, blah, blah. You've got no gear indicator. And I did see a video of somebody reviewing it where they laughed at the fact that uh, they it should have had a gear indicator. I think it was their, his wife or something who said it'd be better with a gear indicator. He laughed at her and then went out on the bike and went, actually, yeah, you're right. And I've got to agree, because it's that cyclical gearbox, you just do sometimes wonder where neutral is. Uh, I think you'll get used to it, but... To, a gear indicator, which I believe is on the Super Cub, would have been a nice addition. Uh, I think that's about it, really, in terms of points of interest that I've noticed. Uh, it's a shame it's not got the old uh, double side stand that the CT110 has got, the posted version. It's got a side stand on the left and on the right, which I, I find makes it very practical for different types of camber and things. I'd be keen to see how this lasts, whether this is going to get kicked to death and whether it, it's sort of scratch and scuff resistant. Uh, the kickstart... I think it's a nice touch in conjunction with the electric start. I did try the kickstart. Very easy. It, it kicks up so easy on, on, the, on the foot. Um, so a nice little feature. Whether it's ne necessary or not, not entirely uh, sure. But I do like the fact it's got an electric start. Call me lazy, but I quite like an electric start. Just in terms of oil check, it's got the main filler there. It's where you put your oil in. And that's where you... And here, on this separate little screw, is a dipstick to check your oil capacity, which I imagine is a litre, like it is on most of these little Hondas. I, I find the people who kill their engines, which is quite common on these small Hondas on the trips that I, I, I've guided, is people don't check the oil. They fail to check the oil, and then they run them at sustained temperatures or sustained, sustained speeds throughout the day for a few days running. Before you know it, you've got no oil in there. So the biggest thing with these small bikes in terms of getting them to go a long distance is regular daily oil checks when i was coming back from australia and doing big big days sort of 600 kilometer days i'd be checking that oil twice three times a day just to make sure it had not dropped off the dipstick uh easy accessible uh spark plug which i like yeah easy to take that out but you know what i can't imagine much is going to go wrong on this bike i think they'll have it's well honed enough now to mean that the abs system isn't going to pack up the fuel injection is not going to pack up uh, so I'd like to think that, say, doing a big global trip on this bike would probably be easier than doing it on the CT110. Yes, if anything goes wrong with the injectors and all that, it's going to be difficult to fix. But the chance of anything going wrong with that kind of technology, I think, is so slim. I would certainly take this over a carburetted version, simply because when you start going over the mountains, it would help calibrate the bike for that altitude, as opposed to on the old carb version, where you're always having to faff and take the needle out and change the the position of the clip on the on the needle and the change of fuel in and everything else and uh it was it was real difficult getting these these carved ct110s over a mountain whereas hopefully this one a little bit easier led lights i think it's a nice touch to give a bit more brightness at night uh the abs i'm not i'm not against the abs on a short chassis bike if anybody's ridden the ct110 those drum brakes are quite sharp and very easy to lock the rear for it and for it to step out so ABS and disc brakes, I think, is another upgrade. I'm not really against technology because most times technology does aid things. I think the stuff like the keyless ignition, like they've got on the Super Cub, is one step too many. I don't see the need for that kind of technology. But ABS and disc brakes, yeah, I'll take that every day at week. So 
So I think that's about it. Does it look good in beige? Ooh, I don't know. I know people who've ordered one in beige. It was their colour of choice. Would it be mine? I think the green one for me, if I was if I was uh, buying one for myself, a green one. I've got the red one. I've got two beige, a green and a red. And, and I think the green for me is is the one, one to go for. So very keen to get these out. I'm just waiting for the number plates to come through from the DVLA. Uh, then I'll get some miles on it. And then obviously the bikes are here for people to come down and ride, really. You're going to take them out, do some back road discovery and go down to Land's End, have a good coastal run down to Land's End and a few other places. I don't think they'll be quite as suitable for the gnarly off-roading or muddy off-roading that I do with the CT110s, mainly because they're new and I guess I don't really want to get them buried up to the axles in mud just yet. But as a more of a hybrid on-road, off-road machine, I think they're going to be more usable than the CT110s, which sort of struggle at 40, 45 miles an hour. That one's just missing a front wheel at the minute. Needs a bit of a TLC. Lucy has been the donor bike for all the other bikes, so when anything's failed on... On another bike, she's been the bike that I've come to get the part off, and then uh, I've got a I've got a parts parts list ready to go out to Joe at One Ten Motorcycles in Brisbane to bring old uh, Lucy back up to up to a rideable standard. Missing the headlight because this that's cracked out of there and a few other little bits. So there she goes. That's for tires. I keep seeing the Shinkos, something twenty two oh twenty twos or something. They're the tires that people seem to be putting on these these Hunter Clubs. Although in fairness, I've got nothing wrong. I've got nothing against these tyres that are on it. I think they'll work reasonably well on dirt. And uh, I think they'll give a relative amount of grip. Uh, and unless you're doing anything really uh, aggressive, I think they'll be absolutely fine. So there we go. Weak point only being no break-off point on the gear lever. And also, a shame Honda didn't carry over the... Now, if you can see that, the parking brake that you got on the CT110. Pull the lever... Push that down, and then that binds on the front brake. Nice little touches like that is what made the CT110 so practical. Is it a shame that they've not put a high-low ratio gearbox on these bikes? Uh, I don't think it's an issue, to be honest. Uh, I can't see, with fuel injection and a bit more power, any kind of terrain that this won't climb up on its own natural gearing that it that it comes with. Uh, I, so I, I don't think I don't think it's a bad thing. I think. When they built the Hunter, the, the original CT90 in the 60s and 70s, yes, it probably was useful for the kind of terrain people were riding. But I think now, with, as I say, a slightly bigger engine, a bit more power uh, and fuel injection, I think it should be all right. So I don't really lament the fact that there is no high-low gearbox. It is it is a future, and uh, well, it's the modern tech. And, and let's be honest, I don't think Honda... Are, I don't think Honda are in it as an innovative company now as maybe they were back when they originally built the CT um, 110. Back then, they were just building so much crazy stuff, like the fact that on the original 90s, you had a lever here on the headstock, which you lifted out, and then there was like a bell-toothed um, clasp clamp uh, that allowed you to turn the, the handlebars in line with the frame so you could mount it on the back of a camper van. Uh, it was a beautiful piece of engineering and, and, and problem solving. Uh, same with, I think it was like an almost an early fuel injection on the carburetor. There was a, a slider which you could change for different altitudes and other little bits like that. I think they were really, really uh, inventive back then. But we'll see. We'll see how this one goes. Honda, please bring them to the UK officially and make our lives a lot easier because I think this bike is is going to uh, be a good thing. I think it'd be a good thing to get young riders on it, on, on into motorcycling, into motorcycle touring, uh, and just having fun on a motorcycle, which I think this bike is, is, is where, it, it's what this bike's going to excel at, just having fun on two wheels. So, yeah, next video I'll be out and about on it. Cheers, bye.